Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Psalms, Psalms, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. It's a familiar verses and text to many people. Psalms, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. The title of the message is, To Live Happily, To Live Happily, To Live Happily. Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Brother Matthew, can you please pray for the message? Amen. To live happily. There's a lot of sayings and a lot of books written about it, and a lot of you know, documentaries and movies are made out of it. To live happily. And that's the purpose many people live their life for, you know, to live happily. You know, who wants to live in a sad, depressing state in this day and age? Many of the Millennials who grow up nowadays, you know, they just want to be happy. That's why they leave their job if they don't like it. That's why you know, their emotions just take control over them. And as Christians, you have to constantly check your heart whether you're living happily. You know, do you live a happy Christian life? Because if you don't live a happy Christian life, then it means that you live a sad, depressing, you know, unfulfilled Christian life. Simple as that. If you're not happy, then you're unhappy. Simple as that. You can't say, you know, I'm not happy, but I'm joyful. I'm not happy, but I'm satisfied with my life. I'm not happy, but I have peace. You do not. And the Bible says, blessed is the man. So people want to be blessed. You know, people want to be happy. And one of the things that will not bring you happiness is money. You know, a lot of people, I mean, root of the what, evil is love of money. There was a man, you know, he was a businessman, and he gave away entire, you know, about $5 million away to charity. He came to realization that his wealth and lavish spending were keeping him from real life and happiness. And many people will say the same thing. Just because you have money, it's not gonna bring you happiness. Of course, it resolves a lot of things. However, it does not. You know, people say five-star lifestyle, but it becomes without feeling, soulless, and it becomes horrible. It's up to you to realize that, man, where am I trying to find my happiness from. Sometimes you think that having a lot of material things will bring you happiness. I mean, for short periods of time, it would. Sometimes you think great job, you know, great family will bring you happiness. It will for always for a short period of time. But what lasts forever? That's the question. Many times Christians, like you and I, we don't look at the long term. We don't look at the future. We're always short-sighted. When you're short-sighted, 
you can't really enjoy that happiness that Lord wants you to have. Amen. Obviously, there are a lot of you know, rhetoric answers out there. Right? We're going to go to heaven. You know, that should give you and I yes. that happiness. Amen. No matter what happens, we're going to go to heaven. Amen. We're going to see Jesus Christ one day. I mean, that should give you happiness. Right? One day you're going to get rid of your body. You're fragile, you're ill-stricken, you know, you can't do anything sometimes, body. It, uh, your brain says to do one thing, but your body can't do it. You know, those days will be gone. And then when you think about it, man, that's the happiness that's coming my way. Then you have to realize that, hey, you know, because a lot of people strive to live for one thing, you know, Money does not bring happiness. I mean, that's something that unbelievably Christians don't understand. Why do Christians get into trouble? Why do Christians always seem unhappy? They seem so dreary, weary. They seem like uh, zombies walking, quote unquote. Why? Because there's one thing on their mind. It could be you. There could be one thing on your mind the whole time, and it's money. Yeah. And it, there's reason why the Bible says root of all evil. Uh, because whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, when your life revolves around money, you cannot find happiness. That's true. Look at all these billionaires out there. Yeah. Right? They try to find happiness by accumulating more wealth becoming more rich, having more zeros in the back of their bank account. Yeah. But when you see their life and their demeanor and their countenance, they're not happy. Why? Because for the simple fact that money does not bring happiness. And as Christians, you have to just engrave that in your heart. Don't just know it in your brain. Put it in your heart. Is my life being moved by money, right? And a lot of times, if you do your best and the Lord provides what your needs are, then you should be satisfied. And those folks don't really worry about or concentrate about or constantly be in the mind about money because they leave it in God's hand. They do their best, and God always provides them. However, many Christians, as they grow up, you know, young people getting their careers, getting married, you know, and starting a family, the financial burdens a lot of times just take over their life. Someone who used to be always gung-ho, zealous, had love for the brethren and the lost souls out there, get drained away because of life, because of love, of money. That's why sometimes you look at, I mean, you guys probably know people like that. Man, that brother or sister Man, we're so fired up for the Lord. And it continued until they met a thing called life after college, Amen. or even during college, or you know, after they get married. And bottom of root of everything, it comes down to one thing. It's money. Because I don't have enough. I need to support this person, that person. And then what happens eventually? You know, Lord is not number one in your life. And money has become your idol. And when that happens, what do people do? They start rationalizing, and they start justifying all of their actions. I have to miss church because I have to feed my family. You know, God will never make you do things not right to do right. I mean, if it's not right, God's not going to make you sin in order to serve him better. I mean, simple illustration is God's not going to want you to go to Las Vegas and earn money so that you could go to church. He doesn't work like that. God's not going to make you win lottery so that you don't have to work and spend the rest of your life, you know, say, passing out tracks. It's very unbalanced life. A lot of times... You know, when you're unbalanced, you are not going to be happy because you're swayed toward one thing 
And that's why God wants you to live a balanced life. In order for you to live a balanced life, you have to have a great center of gravity. And you know, I was talking to one of the persons that I know, and he gave me a great illustration about balance. There's a player named Novak Djokovic. He's a great tennis player. He wins a lot of tournaments. One of the best players ever. What separates him from other players? Because when you come to that professional level, a lot of people have the same amount of skills. But what differentiates great players from nominal players is their mental attitude, mentality. And of course, that translates into your action. He probably has the best balance ever for a tennis player who ever played. Whenever he hits the ball, his center of gravity doesn't move. It's always in perfect position. That's why whether it's you know, backhand, forehand, you know, receiving serve, he's always in the center of gravity. So when you're in the center of gravity, you'll make less mistakes. You'll always probably hit the ball the best way you could hit it. As Christians, you always need to be in that center of gravity. You always have to have that balance. And then someone that gives you that center of gravity is Lord Jesus Christ. I and mean, if you are strongly in the middle where you are held by Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to find all the right shots, all the right receiving, you know, those serves, 100 miles coming at you the best way you can. And you'll win the match because you have the perfect center of gravity, which is Lord Jesus Christ. Then you got to start thinking, man, am I in the right center of gravity in my life? Do I have right balance in my life? Do I let, whether it's money, whether it's you know, material, whether it's person, family, job, whatever it is, am I making those sway to one side more than the other? You know, unlike other places, we preach that you have to do best wherever you are as well as you have to do best when you are doing Lord's things. So if you're at work, you have to do your best. If you're at church, you have to do your best. And if you're at home, you have to do your best. You know, if you're somewhere else, you have to do your best. And it comes down to balance. So once that balance is off, you cannot live a happy Christian life. There's no way. Because you can't stand still. You cannot do the right things when you're off balance. Think about it. I want to go straight line and walk over there. If I'm unbalanced, I'm going to fall. I'm going to go sway. Then I cannot go straight line to other spot. Same thing with your life. The reason that you're not going straight, the reason that you're not living the happy life that God wants you to live, is because you're unbalanced and you're going left or right. And whatever that issue in your life is, you know, it's up to you to resolve it. I, mean, I can't hold your hand and try to resolve it. You know, sometimes people have that mentality, someone has to come out and help me resolve it. Someone has to do it for me. You know, that's a losing mentality. You got to do it. Amen. You got to be accountable. Yes. You got to have responsibility. You know, the, Bob Jones always said, Bob Jones Sr., the problem is with you. Right. I mean, that's the number one thing that you and I have to admit. You know, I mean, if you're not living a happy life right now, it's not your mom's fault, it's not your dad's fault, it's not your husband's wife, it's not your children's fault. It's your fault. Everybody has trials and difficult circumstances in their life. Everybody. And there's always someone who has it worse than you. I mean, would you want to be in third world country right now? No. Where you don't have portable water system? There's no portable bathroom. There's no AC. And you're going to live with mosquitoes. And you're going to just live with bugs everywhere. But you're here in America. It's still the greatest country in the world. Yes. How come you're not happy? How come 
you don't have that joy in life? How come you're very unbalanced? You and I have to look at ourselves in the mirror, spiritual mirror, on a daily basis. When you wash up, you see your face. The reason that you don't live a happy Christian life is because you don't really check your spiritual face, like spiritual body. Look at it, right? If there are a lot of dirt on your face, you have to wash it. If there are some scars on your face, you have to treat it, right? You have to constantly wash your face. And Christians forget to do that, especially you know, when it comes to washing your face spiritually. Then let's look at some of the things that you can do to live a happy Christian life with peace. Because many of you don't have peace in your life. When you're not happy, you don't have peace. One great characteristic of people who are happy, they're very, they have peace in their heart. Because they don't have anything to worry about. I mean, in life, there are a lot of things, issues of life. But it's not going to make them worry. Because they let the Lord take care of it. Amen. Answer is so simple. But words are cheap now. I mean, do you actually put it into action? Do you have it in your heart? Let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Then how can you live happily? How? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Number one thing, the Bible says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So first thing is that you have to keep your heart. You have to protect your heart. You have to monitor your heart. You have to preserve your heart. Why? The Bible says issues of life are from where? It's from heart. And from heart comes everything that defiles a man too, right? And when a man believes in thine heart with all of their heart, they get saved. I mean, Romans 10, 9 and 10. You got saved because you believe in those verses. Yes. Then, basically, you are what you think in your heart. Simple as that. What you think in your heart is you. If you think you are the best in the whole world, that's what you are, right? If you think you're the prettiest in the world, that's what you are, right? If you think you're the richest in the world, and that's what you are. Everything, Bible says, for the out of it are the issues of life. If life it's like a whole big project. In order to create that life, you need a source, and that source is your heart. Yeah. Then from that source, you could start creating things. That's good. Right? You know, when you're doing project, you know, planning stage, development stage, executing stage, you know, and then monitoring stage, all those things will come from your heart then you have to keep your heart with diligence if you're not live happy. Amen. Then in order to do that, you got to start thinking, is my heart creating hell on earth for me? Or is my heart giving me that peace and joy in the Lord? You know, on here on earth, that's the most hell you'll ever see as a Christian. Amen. But some of you guys are living literal hell right now. I mean, that's embarrassing and that's shameful as a Christian. Man, all, I mean, you name it. If you're going through, let's see, and I wrote it down, you're going through worry, bitterness, anger, frustration, envy, jealousy, fear, and always unpeaceful, 
worrying about what man will do to you, that's the nearest thing to hell that you've created in your life. Then, man, okay, let me look at my life. So I, I'm worrying right now because of money, because of relationship problems, whatever it may be, your sickness, illness, and you're bitter, and then you're full of anger and frustration, and then you're, you're jealous and envious. That's the hell that you're living in right now. And that's created, and that's the common theme of this civilization, this humanity. Yes. I mean, don't you want to be different from this world and this devil system? Amen. But no, you're not. You're in the world, and you're of the world, and you're just like the world. That's true. All, you're just, man. I mean, when you look at Christian and their face and countenance, you could just see. Blessed is the man. You're not blessed. No, sir. I mean, when it comes to blessed, you know, in the, in the Bible, especially in the context of Psalms 1, it's talking about happy. Yeah. Someone who's happy. Happy is the man. Right? And you could go back to Genesis to find the definition of it. But... Because you don't keep your heart with all diligence, you're not happy. And that unhappiness translates into you living like in hell. Then what happens? People who live like that, they lose all of their desire to serve God. And, and that's where mental issues come in. That's where depressed I mean, Christians come in. They're like, you're depressed as a Christian. You have a mental issues. Like you want to kill yourself. Wow. I mean, suicide thoughts go through your head. But the main reason is why? Because of your own creation. Because of your own heart. Wow. Because your heart created this project, this world, where it's just like living in hell. Yes, that's good. Man. That's right. yeah. I mean, you know, when heart is used, right? You know, it's like you're, you know, compared to words like guts and backbone you know, in these days and conversations. And it's all about, in this day and age, self-preservation, you know, security politics, self-gratification, and always thinking about your family, you know, that you think that's happiness. You know, nothing wrong with thinking about your family, but coming from Asian background, you know, some of you are so backwards, right? I, I live for my parents. I live for my children, right? And then your happiness is always swayed and based upon the other person. That's why you don't have any backbone. That's why you're always off balance. Because you find your happiness from anything other than Jesus Christ. So if that were to be your wife, your husband, they're your idols. In the sight of God, you're yeah. idolater. Yes. If that's your child, then that's your idol. Yeah. If that's your job, your school, or anything else, then that's your idol. And don't say that, you know, I don't feel like that, I don't believe like that. Words are cheap. Your life shows and your action shows. Why are you not happy about everything in your life? Right. I mean, did God say you should only be blessed? You know, when, when Lord says about blessed, it's the man. I mean, it's, it's the whole life. It's not just section, just a little bit of section. It's the whole life. So when you look at your whole life from top to bottom, I mean, are you happy? I mean, think about it. Just, just be honest with yourself. Is there some hell in your life? then you have to examine those hells in your life. If that's some of the things that I've discussed, then you have to make sure that you deal with that problem like today. Amen. You don't want to let it go tomorrow because that problem will not disappear unless you deal with it. Amen. Something that Christians have a misunderstanding and they're fools about it is that, you know what, I just leave it alone and Lord's going to just take care of it. It doesn't work like that. Lord wants you to take care of it. Yes. 
Yes. Of course, relying on him and trusting in him every step of the way. But you can't be a lazy bum Christian. You have to do something. Yes. Especially in a Bible-believing circle, since there are so many weird and peculiar people who believe in this stuff, right? right? You have to be kind of, you know, out there because normal person in this day and age will not believe the truth. And many of you guys have, you know, such background. So, I mean, it's a testimony, right, that you could give glory to God. But in that mindset, you can't stay there. You got to change it to biblical mindset where, you know what, you know, as a bible believing Christian, I have to do more. I have to do best. I'm not going to just sit there and do nothing. Man should work. I mean, if you're head of the household, work. Yes. I mean, you know why you're not happy? Because you don't work. Amen. I'm as simple as that. Yes. I mean, that's a Bible way. Amen. I mean, you work. That's good. I mean... It's unfortunate that, you know, some families do not have fathers, right? You know, I mean, Lord give you more grace and mercy for that. Then in that circumstance, you do your best. But if you're a man, and if, especially if you're, you know, head of the household, you have to work. I mean, unless you're in the ministry full time and Lord has, Lord has provided with all your need, you have to work. I mean, you have to support the family. Yes. Don't ever expect to be happy as a Christian man when you don't work. Yeah. That's against the Bible. That's against the Word of God. You can't be like expecting the Lord to help you win a lottery. Right? Buying a lottery ticket will not give you happiness. And obviously, as a Christian, Bible-believing Christian, you know, if you ever win it, it's not from the Lord. Right. I mean, it's from the devil. I mean, don't be going on your knees and praising God that, Lord, thank you for helping me win this money. Amen. It's not from the Lord. I mean, don't be mistaken. As Christians, there's no gambling. I mean, Lord, you know, leads every step of the way. But if you expect, expect Lord to bless you, you know, in a gambling manner, then you're believing in different God. And hard work is involved. So if you want to keep your heart with all diligence, you have to work. And then not only for just work, work, you have to work at everything. Amen. Work at reading the Word of God. Work at praying, right? Work at relationship. You just have to work. But if you decide not to do even the basic thing, of working to make a living for you and your family, then you can't be happy. And your family won't be happy. You know, if it hit, you know, somewhere in your heart right now, then maybe it's a good thing. You have to wake up. Yes. You're like, oh man, I'm just waiting for God to give me this great job. What are you doing? Do you have your you know, internet or you know, all those resumes in your, on your bed, you sleep with it and you don't do anything about it. And you're like, oh man, God's gonna, someone's gonna call me out of the blue. You know, like Google, Amazon, Apple's gonna call me. They're gonna, make, they're gonna give me a job as a, you know, CEO, you know, or like a director, you know, I mean, and then you think that if you see an unrecognized number, it's either spam or someone from that company, you know, recruiter calling me, you know, I'm going to get this job. I mean, that's foolish nonsense. That's something that you could find at TBN and Prosperity Gospel. I mean, can you believe it? You know, in the past, they'll be like, okay, if you have credit card debt, donate with your credit card. God will resolve all your credit card debt. <laughs> Right? Keep more with your credit card, then your credit card would disappear. So people's heart is definitely messed up. So in order for you to keep your heart with all diligence, you have to work. Do your best. 
No. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Colossians 3.23. Right. When you do your best, when you work for it, you know, again, we're not talking about salvation, right? Salvation is free gift. Amen. But everything else is not. Yes. I mean, Christian, do not be mistaken. You know, salvation is free, but everything else is not. Right. You have to work for it. Yes. I mean, look at Apostle Paul. He worked for everything. Yes. I mean, look at all the disciples. I mean, look at forefathers of faith. Look at, you know, great Christians around you. They all work for it. And they're happy because they work for it. You know, when someone, you know, that's why, you know, a lot of spoiled kids, when you look at them, they're not happy. They have everything, but they're unhappy because they never work for it. They never, you know, put a finger on anything. That's why if you see, like, people from, you know, rich, rich family, those kids, they, they amount to nothing a lot of times. They die of drug overdose, you know, they go into jail, you know, they're chronic alcoholics or, you know, drug users. Why? They never worked. And as Christians, you can never be happy if you don't work. I mean, I'm, I mean, there are more points that I have to go through, but I have to park it here. Too many Christians are just too lazy. Yes. That's and then you expect God to give you happiness. You can't be lazy and expect to find happiness in the Lord. Lord is so fair. Whatever you work for the Lord, he's going to reward you accordingly. Okay? Just like parables that Jesus Christ, you know, spake. Some will get 10 cities. Some will get five cities. Some will... Some will get no cities at all. Why? Because Lord will reward you according to what you have done for him. And if you have done your best, you'll be happy. If you work for it, you'll be happy. But if you're lazy and don't do anything and expect Lord to just provide you with everything, then you won't be happy. Because just human psychology, there's no satisfaction in your life. When you do something for the Lord, and you accomplish it for the Lord, there's great satisfaction. You're happy in the Lord. I mean, if you don't know it, if you, don't, you haven't gone through that, then you've lived a very unhappy Christian life. But those of you who are, you know, nodding your head, you know, agreeing with it, because you go through it. You went through it. Like, that's something that Christians are lacking this day and age because of culture, because living in America, you know, a lot of things. Why are there so, so much, you know, so much divorce in America? Because they're not keeping heart with all diligence, right? Even Christian families. Why is it happening, Right? When there's unhappy marriage, you can't find happiness. Simple as that. You could find happiness in other parts of the area, but, I mean, unless you guys are living separately, you can't find happiness. Why? Because all those things are against what the Word of God says. You know, Matthew 5.28, you don't have to go there. But adultery comes from the heart. So if you don't keep your heart with diligence, what's, got, what, what's going to be in your heart? Full of adultery. I mean, that's what the Bible says. Because you don't keep your heart with diligence, adultery start creeping in your heart. Then what happens? Then there's divorce proceedings. Suspicious husbands, suspicious wives, jealous wives, jealous husbands, you know, family arguments, you know, now and so and so on. You have you talk about lawyer fees, subpoena, you know, a bunch of other stuff, dates and court proceedings, you know, and hurtful children, distribution, you know, custody, and you have a bad relationship with in laws, you know, it wasn't good in the first place, right? <laughs> and then you become nervous and emotional wreck. Where's the source? Source is from the heart. 
from the heart. So if you do not keep your heart with all diligence, all these things come in. All this will come. So if you don't work, forget it. If you don't work, what happens? You have so much free time. That's the worst thing that could happen for a Christian. Anybody. When you have a lot of free time, because don't tell me that you're reading your Bible all those free time. Don't tell me that you're praying eight hours of free time. Don't tell me that you're out there preaching the gospel and witnessing. No, during those free times, you think of wicked stuff. During those free times, you become adulterous in your heart. You become thieves. You become worldly. You're full of lust. You're full of, you know, everything that you could name it. It just comes. That's why I'm like parking on that point. You want to work so that you have less time to sin. I mean, you have so much time that you have more opportunity to sin. That's why you got to keep your heart with diligence. Why? Because you got to keep it busy. Busy with things of the Lord. Busy with everything that you have to do in your life. That's it's very dangerous. When you're at home, on your bed or on your couch, just doing your phone. What's going to come from all these mobile devices? A bunch of pop-ups come up. You know, things that little kids should never see. Dirty stuff, right? And something about you know, those mobile phones, they hear your you know, conversation and they start sending those you know, advertisements. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, you're, like, you're talking about the other day, me and my wife, we're talking about dog food, right? And what do you know? Like someone's advertising dog food. It just comes out. Uh, we're talking about blue buffalo, and guess what? They're playing blue buffalo for cats. No, no, we're not a dummy, right? It just comes out. Yes. Then, how much time do you spend on your phone? How much time do you spend on those things? Right. Too much. I mean, it's, it's wasteful. Yes. Amen. Your brain cannot watch biblical doctrine for eight hours straight and be okay with it. It needs like some humor. It needs some, you know, some thrill. It needs some, you know, some fun. Drama, action. Then what do you think you're going to do? You're going to start changing the channels that you're watching. You're going to go to a different website. Then after going through those things, do you think you'll be happy? No. I mean, if you're truly saved and you're sealed with the Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit lives in you. You think Holy Spirit will be happy? No, you have just grieved the Holy Ghost. Yes. I say you're not happy. That's why you have to make sure that you don't have too much free time. I mean, it, it's, it boggles my mind that you spend more time on your phone doing useless stuff than you do at work, you do at church, you do at everything else. A combination. That how can you think that you could do anything for the Lord and live a happy Christian life? I mean, you, there are so many things to do in life, right? I mean, this is not just from the Word of God. It's just practical sense, right? You have so much free time, go exercise. Amen. Huh? Do some exercise, right? Because I don't see everybody here who's going to, you know, finish a marathon race or no. super decathlon champions here, no? And if you're not healthy or if you're, you feel like your body is sluggish, not where it should be, then use that free time to walk. Yes. They say walking is the best exercise. I believe it, too. Yes. Least amount of, you know, pressure on your joints. Then do something. You know, go to park, play sports, do something. Yes. Then you'll be more happy. Sometimes you don't take care of your temple of the Holy Ghost. That's why you're unhappy. You're like, I try to be happy. I try to, you know, to serve the Lord. But Lord's like, you have all this free time, and you could take care of your body, but you didn't. That's why you're sick. You're sluggish. 
Now, don't get me wrong, you know, sometimes because of certain things, you know, genetically or because of accidents, you know, you, you have physical ailments. But many times, you're sick, you're lazy, you can't do anything. It's because of you, your lifestyle. Yes. Amen. That lifestyle comes from your heart. Amen. You're drawing. Okay. I have this much free time. You know, I could go walk, you know, enjoy God's creation, you know, be a, have a brighter smile, brighter countenance. Nah, I'm just going to lie on my couch, lie on my bed, play with my phone. Then what do you think is going to happen? That is not going to bring any happiness in your life. Right. That's going to add to that laziness. Yes. That's going to add to that misery. And your body is going to start talking to you. Like, hey, man. <laughs> hey, woman. Hey, child. Or whatever it may be. You need, to, you need to make me better. You need to keep me healthier. And it's something that you have to take seriously. And I, I'm like, I mean, I, I preach about it maybe a little more than other people. It's because, you know, I, I have loved ones who went through it, right? If you do not keep your body and if you're not maintaining it like God wants you to, then you can't do anything for the Lord. You can't go out there and preach. You can't go out there and preach and spread the word. Useless. You can't. You can't do anything. Right. And that's something that you take for granted and you're going to lose it. Yes. It's hard for someone to be happy if they're bedridden. If you go to hospital, which I've been to hospital, not many people you will say are happy. Because it's hard. I mean, as Christian, why do you bring that hardness in your life? I mean, when Lord's like, Lord has a blueprint, Lord said, you know, you don't have to live like that. You could be happy. You know, just trust and obey. Like, just like that hymn, you know, to be happy in Jesus is to trust and obey. And in order to do that, you got to keep your heart with diligence. It will clean your heart. It will clean it. The Word of God will clean it. And then along that comes the fear of the Lord. If you keep your heart with all diligence, you're going to know that, you know, to fear God is to hate evil. Yeah. Then you're going to start hating all those evil things. Amen. Wasting time is evil thing. Is. Right? Not working is evil thing. Right. And then you're like, man, it's, it's, it's becoming so much easier to put these puzzles in. Okay? Evil, evil, don't do it. Good, do it. Good, do it. Evil, don't do it. Don't do it. And then... Because your heart's the one who's moving you, it's so much easier to put it in action. Yes. Just like little kids, right? If their heart's not in it, if you tell them to brush their teeth on a daily basis, they hate it. Right? It's like pulling teeth out all the time. You know? I mean, if, if you tell them to eat vegetables, but if their heart's not in it, you know, I was guilty in the past. Maybe a little guilty still, but hey, you know, you... It's hard, but if your heart's in it, man, it becomes Personal. natural. Yes. It becomes like, okay, it's good for me. It's what God wants. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Then somehow, it's amazing how human body works. When your heart's not in it, everything else just follows. Yes. And your heart's not like, you know what? I'm going to eat it. And then it just follows. I'm going to do it. It just follows. Amen. I'm going to work at it. It just follows. That's why you have to keep your heart with all diligence in order to live happy. And then secondly, you have to keep God's word. Simple as that. I mean, if you do not obey the word of God, you'll never be happy. Right. You've got to obey the word of God. Simple as that. Keep God's word. Uh, the reason you're not happy is because you don't keep God's word. It's so simple. I mean, preaching is supposed to be simple. And it's something that should just, you know, hit your heart. And you'll be like, okay, so I haven't obeyed the word of God. That's why I'm not happy. I, it makes sense, right? One plus one, two. Yes. 
Yes. Me, disobeying word of God, not happy. Me, obey word of God, happy. Simple as that. If you don't understand this, right, you know, ask someone sitting next to you. If you're hearing online, you know, ask somebody that you could call. Then you have to understand in your life, do you keep God's word on a daily basis? I mean, do you do everything that's in your power to obey the word of God? Have you decided in your heart that no matter what comes my way, no matter how hard my circumstance is and will be, I'm going to obey God's word. And that's something that you have to do on a daily basis. Don't just do it today and think that it's going to last a whole week. It doesn't. It might last for a couple hours and you go back to your old ways. Yes. It's something that you have to do it on a daily basis. Amen. Like, am I going to keep God's word today? Brain, don't tell me what to do. My heart says I'm going to obey God's word today. So if you want to live happily, keep thy heart with all diligence. You have to keep God's word. And then lastly, you have to be a cheerful giver. Well, let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We have a lot of scrooges in Christian walk. We have a lot of scrooges in Christian circle. And that's why they're unhappy. Whenever someone has something and they're not a cheerful giver, you'll never be happy. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. God loves a cheerful giver. Cheerful. What do you associate cheerfulness with? Happiness, joyfulness. The Bible says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man occurring as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. This is topic probably not many people want to hear. You want to live happily? Be a cheerful giver. Amen. Give, give with, you know, cheerful heart. Yeah. Don't ever do it because of, you know, grudgingly, you know, because you want to show off to people. God's law is the more you give, the more God will give you. Yeah. The less you give, less you will get. Sometimes it's not only a physical thing. You know, it's like spiritual blessings, right? Look at some folks out there, you know, so-called Christians. They have everything in the world. And when it's time to give something to God, they don't bring out their checkbook. They don't do anything. They just bring out some few change here and there and give it. And that's not the right mindset, right? right? Cheerful giver is not only a cheerful giver monetarily. They're a cheerful giver for everything else. Yes. They give support, whether it's you know, hard labor, physical work, and they also give emotional admonishment to others. If you're not a cheerful giver, don't expect to be happy right. as a Christian. Because when you're not a cheerful giver, it tells me one thing. I don't know about you. You're a very selfish person. You only know about yourself. You're very proud. And essentially, you know, just like General Booth on his dying bed, you're completely against it. He said, you know, what words would you leave for your followers? He said, others. Just one word. When you live a life as a giver, you got to be very, very happy. People with little, you're like, man, they don't have anything, but why are they so happy? Because they're a cheerful giver. People with a lot, man, they have millions of dollars. They have big house, they have nice cars, you know, they have good everything, but why are they so unhappy? One of the reasons, main reasons, because they're not a cheerful giver. They want to hog onto everything. 
they want more and more and more and more and more and more. And you'll never be satisfied. Yeah. And then what happens with that, right? You get into sin. You want to get bigger. You stay away from the Lord if you're a safe Christian because you're going to build your wealth and stuff. I mean, if Lord has given you enough for your family and you have leftover or some other things that you could give to others, you give to others. You give to God. Give it back. And the Lord's going to bless you more. That's, good. That's why, as a Christian, think about your heart. Man, am I a cheerful giver? Do I even give what I need to give to the Lord? I mean, even the minimum. Like, then don't expect your life to be, you know, happy, blessed. If you don't give back to God as a cheerful giver. So, in conclusion, you, you have to check your heart. Do you think you're a happy Christian right now? Can others see that you're a happy Christian? Or have you been hiding, being a hypocrite, smiling outside, but inside is full of despair, bitterness, trouble, you know, everything, you name it? Then you have to go to the Lord, and you have to really get right today because if you let it prolong, then you're only going to eat your life, and you're going to become that bitter Christian who does nothing for the Lord at the end of the day. Happy Christians are the ones that do something for the Lord. Why? Because their heart's in the right place. Unhappy Christians, hearts are in the wrong place. So you got to get out of that backslidden stage Repent, get right with the Lord, and do what the Bible says. Amen. Then what's going to happen? Man, you'll see the difference. Your family will see the difference. People around you will see the difference. And your heart will start drawing this picture, right? Yes. It's white. Now it's like, wow, joyful here, happy there, giver there, being cheerful. You know, working, keeping my heart clean, right? Doing my best for everything for the Lord. Then you become that testimony. Then you become that, you know, you'll hear it one day. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Let's pray.